All right, Roofless fans, today we'll be discussing possibly the most asked question amongst the fan base. And that question is, whose side is Andrew really on? Now, don't get me wrong. He's had a lot of questionable, he's made a lot of questionable decisions and choices. And he's pulled off some actions that have me going, okay, um, is he still with the FBI? Now, Despite, especially recent episode where he basically blew whistle on Brian undoing his cuffs and having a knife and everything. I think Andrew is still on the side of the FBI, but he's playing his role very well, almost too well. I mean, at this point, Tally's gone with his unborn child or their unborn child. It is unknown for show. Oh, show. I was about, about to say show like Karen. This ain't a sister's video. But I'll say it anyway. We don't know for show if Sarah, his wife, is still alive. But Oliver told him that, hey, I went to your house and killed your wife. That way, you know, I made sure that, you know, you were good, brother. Because you got my back. I got yours. So as far as Andrew knows, his cheating wife is dead. The woman he had sex with and has an unborn child with has fled the compound. He's moving up the ranks in the Rakadushi. And now the man who cheated, you know, had an affair with his wife is standing right there <laughs> with him at the, um, at the um, compound. Then on top of that, you have another FBI agent at the compound as well who hasn't blown whistle on Andrew just yet. So, let me just put it this way. That's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. And it reminds me of the Oval in a sense. Well, it makes sense due to this being the spinoff series. It's the fact that There are characters who need to play certain roles in an operation for the operation to work. But the main thing is, can that character, you know, outdo the odds? Specifically when emotions and personal things come into the uh, equation. Priscilla is a prime example of someone who holds a position of power that is not known by the people that she's working with slash working for. But... Due to personal situations like, you know, her husband banging the first lady, she almost blew her cover multiple times and Richard had to call her out for it. Now, in Ruthless, Andrew has done a hell of a good job maintaining his cover. But I think for me personally, the question that a lot of people ask, you know, is indeed whose side is Andrew really on? But I've seen more people make the statement, uh, Andrew, he should have just you know, blue whistle on the compound the last time he showed up. And I think Matt, what, wait, he either snuck into Max house or it was when they were covering up Sarah's death because he had to, you know, fake the murder in order to maintain his cover. But he told him that he needed like another day or so in order to get all the evidence needed. So they can, you know, put down the Rakadushi once and for all. Essentially, the reason he didn't have the feds roll in there is, number one, because he didn't want all the kids to die. Because as soon as, you know, all the government vehicles and law enforcement showed up at the compound, it would, it would have been game over. Everybody would have been dead. But on top of that, even if they apprehended the likes of the highest and whatnot, there wasn't enough evidence or proof to really show that, oh, well, we can't. It's like... The punishment they would get would be a slap on the wrist as opposed to, oh, we shutting this entire operation. We're we're shutting this shit down. But Andrew is like, look, I need just another day or so in order to get everything I need. And then, boom, we're good to go. So, I think for me personally, Andrew knows that it's bigger than just ending things right then and there. He has to make sure that the entire Rakadushi operation is done for once and for all. But it just seems like, you know... What about when he hid Polk's body? Was that a cover-up? I mean, obviously, he didn't kill Polk, but perhaps knowing that, hey, I know exactly where the body is of the deputy that was killed by one of the Rakadushi members, it was in the lake. But then again, it's like, well, Andrew, didn't you hide the body? 
Yeah, but the thing is, I had to do it in order to maintain my cover. Plus, I already know that one of the Rat Kadushi members did it. But who's the Rat Kadushi member that did it? Oh, Melinda, she's, uh... Oh, yeah, where the hell is she again? Probably in the garden somewhere. It's just, there are a lot of factors that go into it, people. Like, trust and believe, I sure as hell wouldn't go back. But it just reminds me of, um... What was it? What war was it? The uh, I gotta think, cause I, look, I'm a sucker for uh, Liberty's Kids, an old cartoon used to come on uh, PBS, and it pretty much covered the history of America from like the Boston Tea Party all the way to when George Washington became president. And of course, I love Hamilton, but I can't remember what was it. It was the war that George Washington won that you know freed you know America from um. British control or whatever, but essentially James Armistead, who was an, a slave, who was a spy on the British, but he also became a double agent, and as a result, his tactical maneuvers from playing one of the enemies, because if I remember correctly, he joined the American army as a spy, and the thing was, hey, you go over to the British, infiltrate their ranks, and then from there, the British made him a spy, thinking that, oh, you're for you're for the British so you can gain your freedom, so why don't you pretend that you're a spy for the Americans? And as a result, he was a key player in keeping um, the British from winning the war. So, I feel like the same thing is true with Andrew, in a sense. Like, he is a spy infiltrating the Rakadushi compound, and he's playing his role so well that he's actually helping the Rakadushi in some ways but the argument could be made if he's truly still fbi him having his hand in the cookie jar helping them you know cover up this cover up that when he rips his mask off like a you know bad guy from scooby-doo he's like ha ha i got the uh drop on all of you so yeah um uh, mac fbi they hit uh you know uh there's a body over there they torture people in that trailer um, there are a lot of drugs, narcotics, you know, human trafficking going on. So the more, it's kind of like Ruth in a sense. I feel like for me personally, Ruth is just drunk with power and she loves the authority and the position. Andrew, I feel like the deeper he gets into the ranks of the Rakadushi, the more criminal activity he's aware of. So when it comes time to bring him down, he's able to prove, hey, this is happening, that's happening. But... Something to also keep note of is I know the highest talks about going to a new location and this and that, but that's not going to happen anytime soon because in Ruthless, uh, well, excuse me, the Oval, which is ahead of the Ruthless timeline, we know the compound is still where it is now. So just putting that out there. But regardless, I think that Andrew is still on the side of the FBI, but there is a lot of evidence to the contrary, but I still think Andrew's on the side of, you know, his job but that's just me he's just playing his position very well so let me know your thoughts in the comments section below uh i did a follow-up video from the episode review from like you know i think andrew and or brian will make malcolm the fall guy where malcolm is going to be hey that's the fbi agent there bah, 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 and then they punish him so that's just my two cents there we'll just have to wait and see but thumbs up the video to show you like it Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Hit subscribe and hit that bell icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel.